Hey, what's going on friends? Today we're gonna to be going over how to replace a sky inside Adobe After Effects using rotoscoping. Specifically, I'd like to shout out Andreas Hem for taking this feature to the next level, incorporating them in his, air quotes, vlogs. They're basically short films. If you haven't seen it, go to his page. I'll link it down below. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump right in. So we're gonna be working with this clip right here, which is a time lapse of mountains. The goal is to replace the sky with a space background. So first we wanna drag our main clip into our composition. So when you lay down the video you're gonna be working with, you then wanna to go to the Roto Brush feature up at the top. Make sure it's selected. Now what we're going to do is double click so it opens up the layer of the video. Note that replacing the sky works extremely well when you have defined edges and a point of contrast. So the computer is going to recognize it way easier than say something that's feathered or if we had a lot of trees up here in these mountains it might be a little bit harder to get a precise roto brush. Anyways with something like this it's extremely easy to cut out the sky. All you have to do is click that roto brush and then just move your brush basically around the edges and just like a Photoshop quick selection, it will automatically find the edges. They are a little bit rough, so we're gonna handle that later. One thing to note is that the rotoscoping function only works for about 20 frames at a time. So make sure your playhead is where you want it in your timeline and you're just gonna go ahead and click the space bar to play it through. Now as we can see right here, it is rendering a roto of those edges throughout time. So as you can see, it's only done about 20 frames of roto brushing. To extend it to your desired length, all you have to do is just repeat the steps over and over. It is a little bit tedious, but it will pay off, trust me. So you need to take your cursor and go to one of the last frames that it has rotoed. You can see this measured by the, the green completion bar. Now we just need to select our sky again and then press the space bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this step for the rest of my footage. All right, so one of the most important parts after you have your sky rotoed is to go up to the top, click and hold, and then go to your refine edge tool. This will make the tracking a lot better because the original rotoing is a little bit jagged. You can go ahead and run the brush over the edges of your subject. You wanna make sure you go over where the mask comes in contact with the object in the foreground. Make sure your cursor is at the beginning of your clip. Note that it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, you'll see that it has read the points of contrast, and this is great. If you do need to make your brush bigger or smaller, on PC, you can hold Control, click, and drag up your mouse or down your mouse, and it's Command click on Mac. Now all we need to do is hit play and let it render. All right, once it's rendered, you're gonna hop back to your main composition, and when we preview, you'll notice that we have to invert where the selection is. So we can hop back and go up to our Roto Brush and Refine Edge tool inside our Effects Controls panel and invert foreground and background. Seems like it will work if we want to reverse the selection. All right, awesome. Now we can see that it is taking out the sky and leaving the foreground of our mountains. Now we're okay to hop back to our main composition. You'll see that it has taken out the sky pretty well except a little bit of clouds on the edges. However, we're not going to fix that for the sake of time. If you wanted to fix it, you can go into the rotoscoping and get really detailed on how you process out the sky. If you make your brush really small, zoom in and basically take your time with the roto. But for the sake of the tutorial, we're going to leave it like this. And now we can work in layers, just kind of like Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is replace the sky with a piece of stock footage that I came across of a night sky time lapse. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it in. So as you can see, we already have a sky replacement. First, I think I'm gonna add some color correction to the foreground to make it more match the color scheme of the background. And since we're doing this pretty fast, we can even add some sort of fog overlay if we want to, to kind of hide the fact that we don't have a really great roto and our color correction was done in a matter of 20 seconds. So I'm gonna drag over this fog overlay to the composition and we're gonna change the blending mode. If you can't see it, go down to your toggle switches and click it on. And what we can do is do a basic screen, which will basically just take out an alpha channel. So automatically we can see that we made this whole image foggy. Maybe I'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit. So hit T on your keyboard for a shortcut to opacity. Maybe we'll go to, yeah, 58 kind of looks good to me. All right, now I'm gonna go up to my ellipse tool to draw a mask over the area that I want to be foggy. By going to your footage that has the mask on it, hit the mask, go to feather, maybe just a little bit out, soften it up a little bit. So after you're done playing around with it for a little bit and you get it to a point you like it, go ahead and play it back. So again, we've gone from a shot that looks like this 
and turned it into something like this. Yours will look a lot better if you take your time. So this is just one example of how you can rotoscope things out in Adobe After Effects. I hope you've learned a little bit about the program and I encourage you to test it out on your own footage. When you really take your time with it and you're creative and use it in a way that supports your footage, the world opens up in post-production when you're editing your videos. One of the most obvious examples is the YouTuber slash filmmaker Andreas Hem. I highly recommend checking out his channel as he uses this method a lot to enhance his videos. Keep learning and as always, if you have any questions, drop them down below. Goodbye.